So I was originally going to talk about this sooner, but um, I got a little sidetracked once Bernie Sanders announced that he'd be exiting the 2020 race. But I do still think that it's important because it demonstrates why there is such this huge trust deficit when it comes to Joe Biden and voters. And I think that politicians in his generation disproportionately need to realize, not to sound ageist, is that in the age of the Internet, you can't just brazenly lie anymore like we're not going to wait until the mainstream media broadcasts your conflicting uh speeches or opinions or views we can look that up on our own accord so it's incumbent on you to be as consistent and honest as you possibly can and not change the story suddenly if what you were saying previously uh, is now inconvenient so in an interview with george stephanopoulos stephanopoulos that name is impossible. In an interview with ABC News, um, he was asked whether or not he believed that it was safe for people to vote uh, in Wisconsin. The answer is no, unequivocally, but he was kind of dodgy. He didn't really give a direct answer. As you know, Wisconsin now having its primary on Tuesday, uh, your opponent, Senator Sanders, has said that should be put off, but, and, the, and the governor now joined that chorus as well, but it looks like it's going to happen. Is that wise? Well, look, I think they should just follow the science. I, uh, and, uh, you know, what I've been hearing, I've, I've been following it like you have, like everybody has, watching the court action is still in court now. And, uh, but I think whatever, wh whatever the science says is what we should do. Whatever the science says is whatever we should do, which is what? Because you are the one who's telling us that you're in constant contact with the medical experts and the scientists. So, like, don't just say that we have to listen to them. You've been consulting with them. So tell us what they're telling you. What do they say? I would imagine uh, they would be saying, of course, it's a bad idea to force people to vote during a global pandemic. So, you know, at that time when Bernie was still in the race, if you and Bernie both told people that it's not safe for them to vote then, you know, there's there's really no loss for either of you there. You're both making the responsible, albeit difficult, decision to tell people to protect themselves, right? I, there's no way that I would have encouraged people to vote uh, and risk their lives, potentially. Like, I would have that on my conscience forever if I were running for office and I told people to vote, even if I knew it, risk, it would potentially put them in jeopardy and risk their lives. Um, but Joe Biden, uh, a couple of days prior in a virtual town hall, said, you know what, it's not up to me. We just have to let the courts decide. Well, I mean, they decided. We all know how that turned out. And the Republican courts in Wisconsin said, we're going to force them to vote in a global pandemic. Now, he's been making a lot of really problematic statements about COVID-19. And this isn't just a recent phenomenon. He was making problematic statements on Super Tuesday 3, which occurred on March 17th. And for more on this, we'll go to a Daily Beast report by Scott Bixby and Hunter Woodall, who explain there's a lot of things that can be done. That's for the Wisconsin courts and folks to decide. Former Vice President Joe Biden said last Thursday in a virtual press briefing in which he insisted that in-person and mail-in voting could both be done safely, even though he considers the possibility of a national convention in the state to be a potential risk to public health. Hmm, I wonder why. It's almost like he doesn't want to risk his own ass. A convention having tens of thousands of people in one arena is very different than having people walk into a polling booth with accurate spacing with six to ten feet apart, one at a time going in, and having the machines scrubbed down, Biden said. I think you could hold the election as well, dealing with mail-in ballots and same-day registration. I think it could be done, but that's for them to decide. I can only wonder if he's completely aware of the situation on the ground in Wisconsin. Kim Butler, head of the Polk County Democratic Party, said of Biden not calling for a delay. Because I don't think if he was really seeing and hearing what was going on here, that he would necessarily feel that way. But Butler, who lives in a red county and said the dynamics playing out on the ground in her area have shown her how difficult it can be to vote, worries that in person and voting Tuesday means that voters will get sick and that fears of the pandemic will suppress the vote. My major fear is that people are going to get sick and possibly even die from voting tomorrow, Butler said. In Sauk County, the Democratic Party chair said Monday morning she was focused on getting absentee ballots returned, but in another sign of the times, she wasn't actively encouraging in-person voting on Tuesday. So initially, he said we should let the courts decide, 
the courts decided and seeing the blowback that the Republican controlled court got, how unpopular that was, almost universal condemnation from people in the center and the left, well, all of a sudden, he's changing his story. He's no longer saying, we uh, should just trust the courts. This is what he had to say. Do you think you won in Wisconsin? Tonight, ordinarily, I'd be hitting you over the head with all these exit polls and cross tabs and things that I know about people all the way down to what they like for lunch. Uh, we're not going to have anything until Monday. What's your gut? No, we're not. Well, my gut uh, is that we shouldn't have had the election in the first place, uh, the in-person election. It should have been all mail ballots in. Uh, it should have been moved in the way that five other states have done it. It's uh, the idea it didn't have enough poll workers in, what, uh, over a hundred and some polling places. Uh, and so he was unequivocal. He was unequivocal. But prior to the blowback that the Wisconsin court received, he wasn't so unequivocal. He was pretty dodgy, if you ask me. I mean, you saw the video. Decide for yourself. Now, this isn't the first time that we've gotten this sort of wishy-washiness from Joe Biden. And, you know, it's not the first time that they basically endorse the idea that voting in a global pandemic is A-OK. -okay. Because on March 17th, during Super Tuesday 3, when more states were voting, Simone Sanders went on CNN in an interview with Chris Cuomo and said, you know what, it's actually fine if they vote because we're listening to the experts. She did not call for a delay back then. Joe Biden did not call for a delay back then. This is what was said. Uh, CDC says no groupings bigger than 50. That's like every polling station, except in very small counties. Uh, the idea of delaying primaries. Uh, Senator Sanders seemed comfortable with that. We should listen to what the CDC says. Delay the primaries if we have to. What are your concerns? Well, look, uh, Chris, I want to be very clear. Uh, democracy is extremely important. And in times of war, in times of strife, our country has always upheld the need to upheld our, uphold our democracy. Um, we have voted in war times. We have, you know, votes were held um, many times in this country after, again, times of strife. So the reality is that the CDC has, in fact, yes, issued guidance um, that has told people to keep their social distancing, not to gather in large crowds. And governors across the country, particularly in the states that vote on Tuesday, Ohio, Arizona, Florida, um, Illinois, they have said that they feel comfortable and are confident that the election will not only be safe, but that they can carry them out. Mm. And so I am looking to these governors, frankly, um, to abide by the CDC guidance. And if they say that they can administer this, administer this process, we believe them, frankly. So a number of early votes, though, Chris, have already been cast. Right. I was looking at some stuff today that said um, Florida's early vote numbers are, are, are tracking ahead of what they were in 2016. So I just encourage folks to, you, folks to use your voice. Your vote is your voice, and our democracy um, is, is extremely extremely important. And even in times of strife in this country, we have to do our duty. So uh, the CDC and folks have said it's safe out there for Tuesday. So I, you know, I don't know what Senator Sanders was talking about, but I'll tell you, Governor DeWine said it was safe in Ohio. So I, I encourage people to get out there and vote on Tuesday. Simone Sanders, thank you very much. Appreciate your take. Thank you. Now, Joe Biden used that same exact talking point. He said, we voted in times of war. Right. But war isn't contagious. Like you can't catch war at the voting booth. So that's a meaningless platitude. Uh, even in times of strife in this country, we have to do our duty. So that's his press spokesperson, Simone Sanders, saying, I think voters should vote in a global pandemic. That's their duty. But now that it's unpopular, mm, not so much. Now, when she made this recommendation, Bernie Sanders press spokesperson, Brianna Joy Gray, called this out because it's dangerous. On Twitter, she said, Simone Sanders just said on CNN with Chris Cuomo that the CDC said it's safe to vote on Tuesday. That's wrong. The only guidance we have so far is that we should not gather in groups of 50 people or more. I'm sure it's an honest mistake, but this is a public health crisis. Now, when she said that, when she called out Simone Sanders, she was attacked by centrist Democrats. Nira Tanden responded to that tweet saying, is the Sanders campaign telling people not to vote on Tuesday? Yeah, they were telling people they shouldn't vote. It should be delayed. Because guess what happened? After people voted, there were reports of people in Broward County contracting COVID-19. Now, I'm sure that you will be shocked to know that Neera Tandon has also since 
changed her position. She tweeted, Republicans are forcing voters to go to the polls tomorrow. Why? So they can win a state Supreme Court seat that could tilt November's election. And she also retweeted Ben Wickler, who stated, if you think that this is what should be happening today, you're either uninformed about coronavirus, a nihilistic partisan, or a Republican-appointed justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, or a combo. And she also retweeted a tweet from Patricia McKnight, where she thanks everyone for sharing the image of her holding a sign that says this is ridiculous. So my question is, Nira, are you suggesting that people shouldn't vote? I mean, do you understand? There's there's zero consistency here. They uh, move the goalpost, and they never take responsibility for what they've done, the harm that they've caused. And how many people contracted COVID-19 because they voted on Super Tuesday 3? How many people contracted COVID-19 or were exposed to it because they voted in Wisconsin? I mean, if there was some leadership from Joe Biden... In all reality, that wouldn't have changed the outcome because this decision was issued by a Republican-controlled court, and the U.S. Supreme Court backed them up, right? But the Democratic governor, Tony Evers of Wisconsin, made the right call. I mean, it took him a little long, right? There was a lot of pressure on him, but he ultimately made the right call. But Joe Biden did not make the right call until after everyone else had already vocalized their uh, disgust with the choice that the Wisconsin court made. So do you understand like this is why there's a trust deficit because you're trying to pee on our legs and tell us it's raining. You're trying to say, oh, I was with you all along. No, you weren't though. And this is the problem. This is why we can't trust Joe Biden. This is why voters aren't enthusiastic to vote with him because he's a Johnny come lately when it comes to every issue. It's not just this. It's the crime bill. All of a sudden, the crime bill was bad, and he's backing legislation that would undo the damage that his bill caused. All of a sudden, you know, the Iraq war was a bad war, even though he voted for it and advocated for it um, as a lawmaker. Do you understand, like, this is why there's so little trust, which translates into a lack of enthusiasm for Joe Biden. It's why we told people he was a bad candidate to take on Donald Trump. But now it's too late. He will face off against Donald Trump barring some extreme circumstance where he is replaced at the convention, which is highly unlikely, I think. <laughs> and yeah. So um, what we need to be pushing for is vote by mail. We've had it in Oregon for a very long time, and it has been very successful. Now, this is a battle that we will have to have with Republicans because Donald Trump was very explicit in condemning vote by mail. I think he called it corrupt. He said it's bad for Republicans. Um, too bad. You see, this kind of, uh, they're mask off. They're saying the quiet part out loud. They're not supposed to admit that all of the voter suppression tactics was actually meant to suppress the vote. They're supposed to chalk it up to some other bullshit, you know, um, excuse. Like, well, we don't implement these voter ID laws because we want to stop black and brown people from voting. We institute these types of policies because, you know, we're trying to stop voter fraud, which is so widespread. So it's just, it's a really frustrating situation. Um, these are the most important times where Americans are looking for a leader. And Joe Biden has uh, failed unquestionably when it comes to leadership here.